Hello everyone, it's Ray Dowdswell here again with uh, another edition of All About Eastbourne and the area around. And today, it is my pleasure once more to chat with Simon Rooksby, has an organisation, charity called Computers for Charities. So, Simon, a few months ago we chatted. Just give us a little update, the background for people who haven't heard us talk before a little update on what Computers for Charities is all about. It's difficult to put it in a nutshell, but uh, Computers for Charities has been going on for nigh on nearly 30 years now. Uh, its primary aim is working with charities, voluntary organisations and schools across the United Kingdom. So for most small organisations, there's a bit of an issue when it comes down to IT, computers uh, and, and all that sort of stuff. And that's what Computers for Charities offers front of house. However, it's, it's developed, grown, and we're involved with a number of projects worldwide. So it's covering the whole UK, looking at our locality in Sussex, and then looking overseas at uh, where there may be need, and it's not just to do with computers. So, yeah, when we started, it was about old computers. Now it's very much about people. So hence we have a strap line, which says passion about people. And that really is the ethos of Computers for Charities is supporting people in whatever format. So it may well be like a Christmas of organisations through the shoe boxes. However, the way we do it is we're actually working with people on a seven day a week basis, 365 days, not just at Christmas. Looking at their communities, how can we build communities? How can we can support people? A lot of talk about mental health, this, that and the other. You know, a lot of what we do here within Eastbourne is, is about building people, building lives and helping people move on. So the people that come in, either as volunteers or, or for particular courses, it's about not just the thing, but also about the person. So, uh, you know, we, we are very much a people focused organisation. Plus, we do it all for free. So, so despite all, all the uh, uh, cynicism about charities, Computers for Charities and lots of charities are like us, that everybody does it, gives their time, gives their skills. You know, they're not on £100,000 a year uh, salaries. You know, we're here for the, for the love of humanity and people. Could you have envisaged 30 years ago that the whole, the whole project would develop as far as it has? I hadn't got a clue, because uh, there, there was no blueprint here, right? You know, when the thing started off, it started very simply, simply in Helsham, basically in a shed, and it's just sort of rolled. Um, and, and like a lot of other things, you know, we move out of our comfort zone. So you sort of think, so for me, it, it required a transition, which was as a nurse, as a manager uh, in hospitals, run, running systems, having, having to actually separate that and go for something where you have a, a totally different way of, life you know when you've got income when you've got all that sort of thing um you know it, it's it's meant a change of mind and a change change of thinking however <clears throat> when you go into the places that we've been into i mean we were in sierra leone when uh you know the rebels were chopping children's arms off you know we've, we've been in zimbabwe when there's been uh, genocide going on we've been in afghanistan we've been in prisons here in britain and seeing the whole you know, whole nature of society, uh, it puts things into perspective. Absolutely, absolutely. Just another question to do with facts and figures. Could you give a, a rough idea of how many computers you've reconditioned and given away? Half a million. Gracious me. Yes. Wait a minute, I need to go and get a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> Half a million. We've, de we, we've, we've dealt with over the years. We, in Africa, we developed a schools program, which wasn't just about putting uh, computers into schools. It was looking at a, a, a community approach, which was everybody utilizing the resource. And there is 100,000 children who benefited from uh, that program alone. So yeah, it's been interesting. My word. So what is your latest project then that we've heard about recently? Well, it's nothing, again, it's nothing to do with us as computers for charities. We respond to people. People come to us and they explain what they're trying to do or what they want to achieve. So here in Sussex, East Sussex, in Eastbourne, people have come to us and said, what are we going to do about the Ukraine? 
you know, we want to do something. We don't know how, what can we do? And, and that's what we've responded to. So we have launched an appeal with, uh, to, uh, to, to, to go both into Ukraine and to work on the borders with uh, the people and the refugees. Our f- first approach is going in with what we call survival boxes. It's an offshoot of the uh, Christmas shoe box in that we developed this a while ago uh, with, with a view to the homeless. So people living on the streets, we can get or- we, can, we can give organizations materials to hand out to people that are actually homeless which is basically personal care, change of clothing, and this, that, and the other. And that we've, we've readapted uh, and uh, called it a survival box for the refugees. So that's what we're going in. We're looking at uh, running a mobile soup kitchen, so converting a trailer into a soup kitchen. We have links in Ukraine and in all those countries because we do a lot of work in Eastern Europe. So again, we're responding to what we're being asked for directly from these are actually first aid equipment is uh, one of those things and that's coming in quite nicely and, and I've, I've just been uh, totally uh, transfixed by people's response you know we've gone through two years of ne- negativity and and now you know people are coming it's, it's about like, it's like flowers coming into bloom you know folks responses are, are, are so positive that they actually want to to help so I, I'm touched how about the deliveries then? If you're taking stuff over to Eastern Europe, Ukraine, and the countries around, how how does that happen? How do, well, it's something we are familiar with because it's what we do. So logistics, we've we've got organisations again where we can actually store stuff um, either in the Ukraine or outside and move things in, and then again going into countries because we're used to the protocols and and. Here, you know, a lot of people haven't heard of Kids of Charities. However, outside of this uh, this country of ours, Computers of Charities is actually quite well known and quite recognised. So we, we, we do have a, a reputation uh, and, and, all, and have, have always got good cooperation. So as I mentioned earlier about uh, Afghanistan, we were actually invited in by the Taliban. You know, the oh. Taliban actually approached us and said, we know, we know what you do. Could you come and, and look, look at education here in Afghanistan? Because we want to develop, we you know, we want we want our children to have better education, and not just boys, also girls. You know, so we've got to be careful about what we pick up on, and uh, and they covered all of that, uh, and and they were they were they were supporting that. So and similarly elsewhere, it's been the same thing. So I, I don't. I mean, you and I know that you know what you and I know what that's about. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. But again, our, our ethos is that we don't push your doors. We we only go by invitation and where mm-hmm. people want us to be. Yeah, it's very wise. Very wise. I, I was thinking along the lines of volunteers, uh, volunteer drivers. So, but by the sound of it, you're all set up. Well, the thing is, yeah. people people get very excited and they want to help. However, if you don't have experience of this sort of thing, uh, we we won't put people into a situation where they're at risk. And uh, it, it, I, I, I'm guilty of this myself, so I have to be I have to be totally honest. You know, quite often we don't think through what the repercussions are. You know, for me, it was going out to Bosnia 30 years ago this year, and totally being unprepared and totally naive about what I was walking into. And then it was when you come back, appreciating what the repercussions of that experience will be. And it, it's quite disturbing. So it, it, it's all very nice going out on a, on, a, on, a, on a nice drive, but possibly what one may encounter, or possibly even there is a risk that one could get hurt or get killed. But we, we I, I, I take a very strong, uh, uh, stance on this is going to be people with experience mm-hmm. if we do that sort of thing. While you're doing a terrific job as far as humanitarian support is concerned, you're still walking a little bit of a tightrope. Well, aren't we, aren't we all? Aren't we all, arranged? Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, the, the whole thing, Computer Charities, has been a bit of a, 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 an anathema for all of us because we don't fundraise. Uh, 
Um, we don't get funding. And it's really uh, trusting. I'm not sure many people understand this, but many years ago, I was diagnosed with terminal cancer. At the age of 14, I had throat cancer and I was given five years to live. And, still here. and I'm still here. Uh, I had surgery and, and, and they stopped at that. They said, there's no point in continuing. Uh, so you're not, you're, you're not, you're, you're not going to reach 19. Uh, so, so with a lot of people that are uh, facing health situations, it, it's a hard thing, you know, because doctors now they give you they, they give you the the bottom line. And uh, but I, I I became a Christian at nineteen. <laughs> I you know I, I I sunk to the bottom, did drugs, did alcohol, did the whole thing, uh, saw no f- purpose in life. And then uh, there was a church there that just spoke to me. And it turned my life around. So I see every day as a bonus. Yes. And then likewise with this, for me, and most people will think I'm crazy. I, I, when I was in Bosnia, you know, God actually spoke to me and said, I'm going to move you into computers. I hate computers. I hate IT. I don't do technology. But this is what I do. You know, my life has been with serving people, and sickness and, and all that sort of thing. So... So this, this, you know, this this is a thing here, and, and this is how the charity operates. So we, we we've got a different sort of dynamic to um, to, to other people. Yeah, day to day, each day as it comes along. And and, and 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 in the Bible, and I don't want to preach here. I'm not here to do a sermon. The Bible actually tells us that the Lord only provides our needs for today. We don't need to worry about tomorrow. Or five years down the road, let's just deal with today, and that's and that's how we go. I think we've experienced that at home here with my wife's health situation and so on. But yeah, there we go. So if people listening to this were interested, uh, how should they get in touch with you? Well, I, I, I again, as I say, even though I <laughs> I work with technology, and, and I bless everybody who works in this world. I love the personal approach. So if somebody has, has, has a yearning, they want to do something, call me, speak to me. Come to our workshop here in Eastbourne. We're, we're just off Lockbridge Drove, um, Hawthorne Road. Give me a ring. Let's, let's have a chat. And uh, we, 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 we can take it from there. So the phone number is 01323 Our doors are always open. We, you know, our nature here at CFC is not to turn people away. So... People come in, volunteer, got mental health problems, uh, disability, what have you. It, you know, and there's all sorts of things going on that you can get involved with. But if you, know, if, if you do have some thoughts here or some, or even some ideas, because I don't know at all. I, don't, I, I, I find as I get older, I know even less than I thought, thought I knew. So, yeah, please give us a call or drop in. Uh, but obviously check because I'm all over the place at the moment. Yes. Yeah. Well, you have invited me before now to come along. I haven't made it yet, but I will do, and I'll let you know in advance to put the kettle on. So. Yeah, we, yeah, we, well, the, be- the beauty of the facilities that we've got here is we have got a kitchen, and that and that's been my real joy is that the volunteers get treated well and they've got yes. they've, they've got a good setting to to operate in. So good, excellent. Well, Simon, it's been good to to catch up, and thank you for. Uh, the review of what you've been doing over the last three decades and any plans for the future. So whatever comes along, I guess you're going to be there. Well, uh, it's, uh, uh, I feel the calling of my life is, is, is about going out. And we, you know, for the last year, uh, through the COVID time, it's been very restrictive for all of us. Um, we, we had a lovely chap, Les, who did our bookkeeping for us. He had a stroke last year. We had an administrator. She had to go to Wales and care for her her uh, parents. I've also got uh, both parents still living at home with dementia, so I'm t- torn between London uh, and Eastbourne. But I, I'm fe- feeling that, I, I, that there is a return for me coming out because that's where I, I operate outside and uh, and uh, and doing the wider things, and that's what I'm looking forward to. So we're looking at a possible bike. I, I, I drive a motorcycle, Ray. Oh yes. Yeah. So we're looking at a, a potential bike run next year because I, 
threatened everybody with taking a sabbatical and going out and getting on the bike ship to Sierra Leone and then driving across to Kenya and then down to South Africa because I've got inquiries from all sorts of places, churches, schools, hospitals, and I want to go out and meet them and just uh, try to encourage them. Can I stop you there, uh, Simon, because our time's up and I need to sign off. But just to say, I'll make a note of that and I'll come back to you in a few months to ask how that project's going. Yeah, please do. I might even join you. I'd love to have a motorbike here, as I did when we lived overseas. However, so thanks once again, everybody who's been listening in to our podcast. My name is Ray Dadswell, and this has been Eastbourne.online. Thanks to my team, Chris Dabbs, and the podcast studio for putting this podcast together. And don't forget, you can subscribe, listen again, or catch up with any of my previous interviews online on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or on your Alexa, or wherever you get your podcasts from. Thanks again. See you soon. <laughs>